No, faccio con, con la freccetta. Ah, adesso, ok, wow, 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 ok. No, it's ok, I like both. It's weird? Uh -huh. First of all, I should... But uh, this is not my slide. Hmm. You were right, this pointer is weird and obvious. I mean, we can do it also without pointer. It's okay, so this is getting too long. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I think it's fine. Okay, so I think we are ready for uh, the last talk of the day, who is uh, given by Silvia Papalardi, who is junior professor at uh, Cologne University. And uh, she will go deeper into these uh, free probability issues and explain how this is connected to uh, notions like eigenstate thermalization hypothesis and equilibration in quantum systems. So please, okay. Silvia. So first of all, thanks a lot for the organizers to be so brave to put a quantum session in a machine learning uh, conference and uh, to our chair, Valentina Ross, who has been behind that. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, two works uh, uh, that I've been doing with collaborators Sintetis, Laura Foini and Jorge Kurchan, and Felix Fritz and Tomasz Prozan in Ljubljana, in which uh, we actually found out this free probability, which is this uh, beautiful framework that Ludwig just explained us, applies uh, to the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. So what is this uh, strange uh, hypothesis uh, that uh, we are interested in? Well, you can think about it in two ways. So either our way to understand uh, uh, quantum statistical mechanics and equilibration, which is what we like to think about, or like uh, structured random matrices, uh, which uh, I believe might, might resonate with you more. Uh, so, so in the first part of the talk, so I, I'm going to be more, it's going to be more on the physics and why I'm saying the structured random matrices actually matter for, for the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. I'm going to present a toy model, which is a, like a hyper simplified version just of full random matrices, which hopefully will um, be quite clear to you. And then I'm going to tell you what's the point uh, of, uh, of my talk, which is that the general uh, version of this ETH, this eigenstate thermalization hypothesis, needs correlations. And I believe that uh, all of you here are quite interested in correlations. And what we found, and we were quite surprised and happy about it, is that free probability is actually a framework which allows to simplify immensely the description of correlation in random matrices. And in ETH, so this is basically what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's, uh, uh, let's introduce uh, uh, quantum dynamics, so since it's late, it's going to be a cartoon. Uh, so the, 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 the standard problem that one is interested in is, is an out of equilibrium property uh, problem in which one has an out of equilibrium initial state, like a drop of ink in a glass of water, that then evolves uh, uh, in isolation from the environment up to a stationary value, which is described by standard statistical mechanics. So in the quantum problem, the idea is exactly the same, while your initial state is a pure wave function psi, like some bunch of spin polarized, and then the evolution in isolation from the environment is actually the Schrodinger equation um, that determined by the Hamiltonian of the system, which uh, will bring the system out of equilibrium, developing some non-local correlations, and then you have a stationary state. Now, in the past 20, 30 years, it has been clear that to understand this out of equilibrium relaxation property uh, process, you should focus on local observables. So like the density of uh, the blue particles in the example that I was showing you before. And when I say local, I imagine uh, yeah, some local density or some, some observable, some operator, which is defined only on a local support of the whole Hilbert space. So, so the typical protocol that one has in mind, that one computes the expectation value of time t of this operator in the initial wave function. This will have an initial state, then will undergo some oscillation and attain a value which we would like to describe with standard statistical mechanics. So the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis is somehow a way to describe this process and actually this 
was what driven what what really was a, a, a the main motivation for introducing it but also we would like to have a theory which allows to, us to describe also dynamics at equilibrium so after the state is already equilibrated and this is what uh, this talk is going to talk about so i'm not going to talk about the way i approach equilibrium but just how to describe equilibrium in a many body system Okay, so this is the goal, and, and by saying that I want to study uh, dynamics of local observable, basically, no, before that, I wanted to say that, that, that this issue of studying thermalization is important not only from the fundamental perspective, but also because in recent years, the field of uh, quantum technologies and quantum simulation has really received an unprecedented boost due to the developments in technologies. And this has led now uh, to, to probe at unprecedented timescales uh, quantum evolution uh, in, in a different sort of platforms. And these, uh, these uh, developments really uh, made these questions like how unitarity arises, uh, how equilibrium arises from unitary evolution, or how to describe uh, quantum states out of equilibrium are really important and pressing matter, not only for, let's say, fundamental uh, questions. Okay, so to, to describe this issue, as we were saying, we want to look at, uh, at uh, some observable at time t. So this is the old Heisenberg picture. Um, so the Hamiltonian, basically, is selecting the eigenbasis of which you want to look at uh, your observable. So as you see in this Heisenberg picture, there are two elements. So there is the oscillation given by the spectrum of the Hamiltonian. And then uh, there are these matrix elements uh, of, the, of the observable that you're considering in the energy eigenbasis. So throughout all this talk, and the essence of ETH is how to describe these matrix elements of a, of a, certain, of a certain operator in a statistical way to retrieve uh, quantum statistical mechanics. Okay? So, so this is the object. And now let's simplify it and tell you why uh, this, you can think about it as a random matrix. So um, the idea, the, this, this toy model, this oversimplified version, is uh, amounts in basically thinking about uh, a diagonal, as, uh, as Jean was saying before. So a, a diagonal operator looked uh, in, uh, um, in, the, in the basis of some, uh, on some random basis. So here, <coughs> with a slight uh, difference from what Ludwig said, the dimension of my matrix is D, okay, not to be confused with N. So I have a D by D matrix, and what I'm looking at are, are, are the matrix elements in, uh, in an eigenvector of a unitary random matrix, okay? So what I can do now, this i and j, they correspond to position in this matrix, I can take averages over the unitary random matrix, and, and uh, uh, due to similar reasons to the last slide of Ludwig, basically what we find out is that the diagonal part of these matrices have an expectation value which is all the same over all uh, the different uh, uh, matrix elements. So this is just depends just on the eigenvalues of the operator, and I'm going to call it kappa one. And then if I compute the expectation value of, uh, of a matrix element with two different indices, this typically vanishes. <coughs> but if I compute the expectation value of products of two on a loop, then this will have a finite expectation value. And this expectation value is given basically by, by the variance of the operator over the size of, um, of the matrix. Okay, so this is a, a, a first approximation, and you can, you can recombine these informations in this toy ansatz, which basically tells you that you can rewrite your matrix as a diagonal part, which is going to be given by this kappa one, and a not diagonal fluctuating part, which has an average zero, such that if I compute for i different from j, I obtain zero if I compute the average, and then it has a variance one, such that I retrieve that the fluctuations, the first order fluctuations of this matrix are exactly kappa two over d. So this is the kind of answer uh, uh, we're gonna go for when describing ETH, but it's just a way to encode this kind of information, the, the first and the second moment of this, uh, of this matrix element. But now you see that uh, by writing it, yes? Yes, in this, in this toy model, yes. Because here I'm taking a random, uh, random basis, so there is no structure. <coughs> also, so basically K2 is the variance of, of, uh, of uh, that random uh, that matrix. So it's just the expectation value of A squared minus A squared. 
Okay. So, they only, so the, in this case, they only depend on the eigenvalues of the matrix. Mm. Okay, sorry, I made a problem there. <coughs> okay, so at this point, there is no information about correlations, but actually, this toy model hosts also correlation. So, let me represent them pictorially what I just said in, the in, in this way. So, I want to put the elements of my matrix on this loop, and I will indicate them by, by, by dots. And then my matrices, they live on edges which connect more dots. So clearly in the case in which I have only one dot, here I'm taking just the diagonal expectation value AII. Here in which I have two dots, I have IIJ and AJI. Okay, so here, uh, and when I indicate them with blue, I mean that the indices are different. So what I said up to now is just that this first loop is kappa 1, the second loop with two indices is kappa 2 over d. Okay, so if I continue this exercise, I will discover that, that I, can, I can consider the expectation value of many products of different matrix elements, and these simple loops, they will contribute with a combination of, uh, of moments, exactly like kappa 2 and kappa 1, of a different order, that now it's a kappa n, divided by the size of the matrix to the power n minus 1. So this is just a standard scaling. And then it can be also proved that this, this uh, um, connected correlation function here, kappa, are actually the free cumulants. But I'm going to go back on this, but this was actually proved in a paper about inference. So just to say that all these questions are, are quite interconnected. Just a quick question. Uh, this statement about kappa <coughs> and cumulants, is this true for a finite system or only in the three uh, everything, everything I'm going to say is in the limit D of large D. Yes, well, this is good. So, <coughs> so basically, what I wanted to say is that if we take full random matrices, we can describe uh, uh, the expectation value of uh, the matrix elements in, in, random, uh, in random basis, and that they account also for correlations, okay? And this uh, can be summarized in ansatz, uh, which, uh, which can regard only the matrix A, I, J. Now, from full random matrices, which uh, is something quite standard, we want to introduce information about the model that we're studying in such a way to account for, for equilibrium statistical mechanics. And this is somehow what goes under the name of ETH. So we want to study uh, many body systems described by the Hamiltonian H, uh, in which the, the, the eigenvalues that, that in the eigenvectors over which we are computing the expectation value are, 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 are defined in this way. So the typical example that we have in mind is a many-body uh, problem with uh, large degrees of freedom, like uh, a spin chain. So, so we saw before the, the Ising model. Here you can consider an interacting uh, quantum systems that we, we used to say degenerate. So in absence of conservation, uh, conservation um, uh, quantities, such that the eigenvalues uh, are typically, are typically non-degenerate. So a very big part of quantum chaos, uh, starting from the 50s, was recognizing uh, that eigenvalues of, of Hamiltonians actually share the same properties as uh, eigenvalues of random matrices. But now what we want to look at so are these uh, expectation value of uh, operators. So it's not an information on the eigenvalues, it's rather an information about the statistics of the eigenvectors. So let me now, since, uh, since here we are in high dimensions, so let, let, me, let me tell you what are my, my high dimensions, so just to, 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 be, to justify why I'm here. No, so, so we have a system with large uh, degrees of freedom. So L is going to be here, uh, my number of sites, so they ha have to be large. And then I have the size of the matrix. So my large, I have a larger Hilbert space in the sense that this scales exponentially with the, with the size of the system and the numbers of degree of freedom. So w when I say exponentially small or exponentially large, in the, the, the matrix uh, size is always polynomially. So this is often a misunderstanding among different communities. And then what's very important uh, for us is that we actually have a density of states at energy E. So this quantity, the number of states at a certain energy, define, uh, let's say, the, the, the entropy of the system, and these at finite energy density scales exponentially also with the system size, but with a rate which is not flat, like in the case of the full random matrices. So here it depends on energy, okay? 
So these are, these are all, all, all the ways that, that we are in high dimensions, and in particular the, the dimension of the Hilbert space, but also because we have a very large density of states. These are very big matrices, but... Uh, but uh, um, so the idea is, uh, of the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis is to substitute this, um, this full random matrix with a structured random matrix which takes into account energy, the density of states, and the energy differences. So this was uh, fully established by Stranitsky in 1999 uh, in a paper which is uh, very beautiful to read if you're interested in the topic and still quite, uh, I mean, accurate, also despite it was uh, some years ago. So the idea, exactly in the same spirit as, as the toy model I showed you before, is that my matrix elements now, they're going to be given by a, a smooth function that now depends on the average energy between two points in this matrix. So this E plus is always the sum divided by, by two. But now I, I also have another scale here, which is the difference between two, two energies. So because in this, in this Hamiltonian case, my spectrum is ordered, okay? So exactly in the same spirit here, I have a fluctuating pseudo random number. So now I, I don't have any more a real source of disorder because once I have my Hamiltonian, I diagonalize it and there is no external source of disorder. But actually these matrix elements behave like a pseudo random numbers. So I can think about uh, this quantity with uh, zero average and, and unit variance. And then I will have that the diagonal part uh, will correspond to the microcanonical expectation uh, function. Uh, which, is, uh, which is a function of the average energy. And then there is an off-diagonal function that now, you remember in the case before, it was, uh, it was uh, 1 over d, while in this case is uh, 1 over the density of states. So it's exponentially small with the entropy of the system as energy e. And then there is also this smooth function f of omega, which is somehow depending both on the energy and on the frequency. And this is to say that the, the matrix would typically have like a banded structure because you can imagine that the matrix element between energies which are quite different, they should be small. So somehow this, this, this F function, they should decay at large frequency. Okay, so let, let, let me show you the design state thermalization hypothesis has been proved to be extremely successful. So let me just show you two examples. <coughs> the diagonal part actually encodes the statistical average of observables. So now if we want to compute the thermal average of my observable at temperature beta, well, this in the presence of equivalence of ensemble is given by the expectation value, microcanonical expectation value at the same energy density, which in turn is encoded in a single eigenstate due to the structure of the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. So this is why we usually say all thermodynamics is an eigenstate, but this actually holds for, for, for single local expectation values. So what's nice is that now you can check this thing in examples like the one I showed you before. So if now in that Ising spin chain I take the sum of local, uh, of local magnetizations and then I put it on my, my computer, I can diagonalize uh, the model and I will see that this expectation value uh, somehow goes to a smooth function by increasing system size. And it's a smooth function of the energy density. So here with L I'm increasing system size and you see that the fluctuations they're becoming smaller and smaller. So this is the eigenstate ETH for the diagonal part, but also the off-diagonal part is very important. And actually it encodes all two-point diagonal correlation functions. So imagine now that I have a, I'm at equilibrium and I want to compute uh, the, the, the correlation between uh, uh, an, um, an observable at time zero and observable at time t, and I want to compute the connected correlation. Well, if you do the calculation with ETH, you will find that this is given exactly by the smooth function appearing in ETH chances. And also in this case, you can, you can retrieve it uh, um, numerically, so by, by simply uh, diagonalizing this big matrix and looking at this off-diagonal expectation value, and you see that basically they have a smooth function and as I was saying to you, they decay at large frequencies. So this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is very important, that this kappa 2 of omega now, differently from, uh, from the example of a full random matrix, now they decay with frequency, so, so they have this structure. And this is also important because at small frequencies, uh, these quantities, uh, therefore, they encode all the transport behavior of your physical system. Now, you see also that here there is not only the smooth function, there is also a thermal uh, product, and this is actually to encode the fluctuation dissipation theorem. 
for uh, who is passionate about it. So it, it encodes everything, basically all, all statistical mechanics up to two-point function. Okay. So with this, uh, uh, this is already quite, quite nice because uh, what we saw is that by including dependence on the energy density and the frequency in these answers, basically we, we, we achieved, um, uh, we, we were able to describe expectation values and dynamical correlation functions. Now we would like uh, to, to, to know more, and in particular, we would like to know something about multipoint correlation functions. And so this could be the case. <clears throat> so uh, I, I guess this question is not important only for us, but it's in general important once you have a, a data set and you want to know uh, how much different points of your data set are correlated, it is important to be able to go beyond the just two-point functions. So uh, I would say that in the many body community, this question was, uh, was uh, motivated a lot by, by the suggestion of looking at this uh, specific form of, uh, of correlation function. So I'm going to present it just because then I show you the numerical examples of this. It's not very important, but basically from my energy physics, uh, uh, very smart people suggested to look at these correlation functions with this uh, uh, strange uh, time ordering as a probe of many body chaos because they encode Lyapunov exponent and as such. And so then people started wondering, okay, how can I describe this OTOC, these out of time order correlators via the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis? So the first thing is that if I simply take the answers I showed you before, which only describe up to two point function, clearly uh, I, 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 I'm doing something wrong and I cannot get all the physics. It would be like saying if I assume absence of correlations between my matrix elements, all the moments of higher order would just be determined by two-point function, which is quite too much uh, to ask uh, uh, in physics. Not, it would be to ask to the world to be Gaussian uh, all the time. So indeed, if you compute in this, uh, in this uh, toy model, in this spin chain that I showed you before, the, this OTOC, so this four-point function, as a function of time, and you compare it uh, in blue with the Gaussian result, you see that there is a huge discrepancy, which is not improving by increasing the system size. So something is missing, and uh, the something that is missing was, uh, was introduced by, in this paper by Laura Foyne and Jorge Curcian in 2019. And it, it is really in the same spirit of, of including higher order correlation like in the toy model I described before. So the idea is to consider correlation between matrix elements which lie on a loop of this form. And exactly as in the case before, we had, uh, we had uh, uh, the, the uh, size of the matrix at the denominator with this n minus one power here, we will have the density of states. And now what's important also is that this function that before was flat and depending only on the eigenvalues of the matrix, now it will depend also on all the energy differences of, of the system. Okay. So this is uh, what was introduced by Foyne and Korchan, and this is the prediction when all the matrix elements are different. So remember in these loops, uh, I have to think about uh, uh, when, when they're blue and separated, the, the, the matrix, uh, the indices are all different, because when the indices repeat, uh, uh, based on some entropic arguments, I can also say that the, the expectation values that we'll have to factorize. Okay. So this is, this is the foyni kurchan uh, recipe with the goal in mind that what you want to describe at the end are correlation functions uh, between observables at different times. So uh, in fact, why, why those kind of co correlations on these loops matter? Because at the end, if you want to compute an expectation value, what you have to do is to sum over all the possible indices of matrix elements on a loop. So, so this is what comes when you put uh, inside the energy eigenbasis. So you're, you're just rewriting a product of, uh, of uh, matrices. Okay, operators. So here I'm just representing pictorially now time over, over these uh, edges uh, connecting to uh, matrix elements. Now there is, a, there is a, another subtlety that here the, the, the expectation value that we are taking is a thermal expectation value. So I have to decide where I'm putting the temperature. So this is, this is not very important. Okay. But so, so this is the computation that I have to do. I have to sum over all the possible loops. And clearly in this, in this uh, now when I have this formula, what I have to do, I have to start considering all the different ways uh, these indices uh, um, can, can be to respect to each other. So I have to consider all the possible contractions. And when I start uh, considering all the possible contractions, I end up in the following situation. So 
Uh, when I have to do this submission, I have a situation in which all the indices are different. So this is the blue, uh, the, the, the blue uh, dots. Then I have situations in, in which, for instance, the index i can be equal to the index k. So here I'm putting them in the same block. Then I have situations in which three of the indices are of the same form, and I put them on the same block, so on and so forth. In this case, all the indices are the same, and I put them. And then I, I realize, as, as Ludwig showed, that from four on, I can also have uh, contractions that after I arrange these indices on a loop, this, uh, this, uh, this um, contraction cross, okay? So basically, from, uh, from this, uh, you realize that, that there are three types of diagrams uh, coming from contracting different uh, matrix elements which are on a loop that have the same for other are simple loops, so they're all different, or they are non-crossing diagrams in the sense that I can group indices in blocks that do not overlap, and then I have crossing diagrams. And at this point, there is no ETH. This is just a, an index bookkeeping, let's say, a pictorial index bookkeeping. But now I want to, to associate to each diagram a, a, an ETH ansatz, so an ETH, um, the, 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 the smooth function appearing in ETH and their entropic counting. So for instance, as we said, the simple loop will contribute with the smooth function of order four. And then in this case, for instance, I, I will have um, AII, so I put the, the diagonal part, and then I have the off-diagonal for IIJ, IJI, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so this is a way to associate with these different indices the ETH content, and, and then I can use ETH. So ETH was telling me that Basically, these, uh, uh, these um, uh, matrix elements, uh, there is a concentration of measure. Uh, so these matrix elements, once I sum over them, I can substitute what I would have had if I was averaging. And so once I do that, uh, and, I, and I plug the, the two answers that I showed you before, I have two important outcomes. So the first is that actually crossing diagrams, uh, which are the one corresponding to the last, uh, to the last uh, uh, diagram I showed here, are exponentially suppressed in the system size or are suppressed in the size of the matrix, okay? So they basically do not count. And then I have that no crossing partitions factorized. So there was first a question about the identification of, of um, free cumulants with, with this, and in our case it's important that you actually have factorization of of non-crossing partitions, okay? And this comes from, uh, from uh, um, solving uh, these kind of problems through saddle point because we have a large N model, okay? So once uh, we actually plug in uh, these, uh, these two conditions, uh, we'll see free, free probability popping out. So, so these, uh, these conditions actually what, uh, are things that also you can check on your computer. So they're not uh, just uh, random matrix estimates, but once you take uh, uh, the expectation value of, of a magnetization, then you look at uh, how these, uh, these uh, crossing uh, partitions or non-crossing partition scale, you find that they obey to our predictions. So here in red in the toy model I showed you before is this crossing partition which decays uh, with the inverse of the Hilbert space size, uh, while this R is basically the ratio between the crossing diagram and the factorized one, and it's clearly going to zero, the difference from one. So this is just to say that in physical models, actually, this assumption hold quite well. Uh, how, how am I doing with time? Okay. Okay, good. So, so, so since Ludwig did such a great job in, in introducing free probability, I should probably uh, skip this. Just to say that if you want to know more, uh, there is a blog which is aimed at freeing probability from its commutative chains, which has all the possible uh, resources uh, that you could be interested in. So there are um, many, many lecture notes, books, etc. So, so what uh, really we need uh, for what I'm going to say is this concept of non-crossing partition that Ludwig uh, introduced, uh, which are basically partitions where blocks uh, do not cross. <laughs> it's quite simple. And they pop out uh, from, from n equal to four on. And uh, what we're interested in, what's important for us, uh, are, are these free cumulants, uh, which are defined implicitly from this moment cumulant formula. So Ludwig already introduced it, I can skip it. Uh, but it's a way, so, so you have to think about a way to define implicitly connected correlation functions uh, in terms of moments. So, so it's an implicit definition uh, in terms of, uh, of moments of equal and lower order. But it's done in such a way 
that, uh, um, that for instance, for Gaussian random matrices, the free cumulants vanish. So it's exactly the same thing as the standard cumulants, uh, that uh, in standard cumulants uh, from uh, Q greater than two, the standard cumulants of Gaussian um, random variable vanish. In this case, the free cumulant of Gaussian random matrices vanish from order greater than two. Okay. So, so uh, what uh, you, you might have uh, realized is that now these ETH diagrams are exactly the non-crossing partitions, are exactly related to the non-crossing partitions coming in free probability. So once we, we want to do the computation of our moments, we, we don't have to do all the combinatorics again, but all these calculations were already done in free probability. Okay. So this leads us somehow to define uh, a thermal moment free cumulant expan uh, expansion. So to define thermal free cumulants. Now again, I want to stress that this is just a definition of, uh, of a combination of moments. Okay. But for us in ETH, we can add also another information. So this is what ETH is saying on free cumulants. Is that actually, thanks to ETH, free cumulants are given just by these simple loops, so are gi given just to summation with uh, different indices. And this allows uh, to re-express these free cumulants directly in terms uh, of the Fourier transform of the smooth function appearing in the TH ansatz, where now this is a generalization of the fluctuation dissipation theorem, which basically just comes from the fact that in our case the measure is not, that, uh, is not trace invariant, so there is a point in which you're putting temperature, going back to your question whether there is was relevant, okay? So this is, this is our, um, our uh, identification. Basically, you, you want to compute higher order correlations. And then you realize the free probability that the contribution that matter for these higher order correlations have exactly the same diagrams that pop out in free probability. So then it's the natural object to study are these free cumulants. So they are the proper cumulants that somehow have the proper scaling. And we say that in our case, these are given by summations on different indices, so by these simple loops. So, so in the example uh, that I was showing you before now, uh, if, uh, so you remember we had the orange line, which was the, the fourth, uh, the, the, the OTOC, so the moment at different times, and then you add the, the, the comparison with the Gaussian result in blue. Now, if you add the free cumulant, you see that the summation of the two gives you the full result. So in here, in this free cumulant, I'm computing the ETH free cumulant. So this is really the summation only over different indices. And, uh, and in this case, uh, we retrieve the full result. So we can identify and pinpoint the role of correlations exactly in this free cumulant. Okay, so this is also something else that I would like to say to, to, to uh, contrast the toy model I did before with what happens in physical systems. So, so what's very important, what we find numerically, is that these free cumulants have a, a very strong dependence uh, on frequencies. So um, if, if you put them in your computer, also at higher order, not only at the second order, these free cumulants decay to zero at large frequencies almost exponentially, and then a small frequency, they have all sorts of different behavior. And this, as I was saying, has to be contrasted with the toy model for flat random matrices. So once you have uh, this, uh, this flat random matrices, you can compute the, the free cumulant in frequency, which uh, it's going to be given by the free cumulants uh, only, only of the matrix, uh, which, uh, which as we were saying, depends only on the eigenvalues of the matrix. And then a quantity, which is a, a four point spectral correlator, but, uh, but uh, the, the, this, uh, this spectral correlator is usually flat uh, for frequencies uh, over their one. So the actual result from uh, these toy models, uh, which are at the end, the rotational invariant random matrix um, models is that free cumulants are flat as a function of frequency, while in ETH, all the physics is given by the fact that this free cumulants actually depends on, uh, on the difference between, between the energies we are considering. Okay, then uh, free probability allows us also to say many interesting things that maybe are not uh, uh, very interesting to you. But it's just to say that the free probability comes with, uh, with a set of tools uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, generating function and uh, different sorts of transforms that uh, help you in computing a distribution of eigenvalues or moments, etc. And so in our case also, in which we want to compute the thermal expectation values or dynamical correlation functions, free probability gives us tools uh, that can be, can be used uh, to, to compute these things. 
Okay, with this, uh, I am almost done. Okay, let me conclude. So I hope I convinced you that if you want to study uh, quantum statistical mechanics, uh, what you can replace in your mind is a, is a structured uh, random matrix where all the physics is inside uh, this, this fat diagonal uh, of, um, of the random matrix. So it's, it's not really a diagonal. But okay. So it's inside these correlations. And then that you need correlations to describe physics beyond two-point functions. Uh, this is obvious, but every time you are beyond the linear response, and to do that, it's quite simple. Uh, it's much simpler to use uh, to use free equivalence and to use free probability. Now uh, there are a series of open questions. Uh, so some of these open questions regards the physics uh, encoded by this free equivalence. So uh, if there are hierarchy among them, how this picture changes uh, in different in different systems. There is a very interesting question. So the question that was asked before about uh, what happens about subleading uh, sub corrections. So we have been trying to think a little bit about it. Uh, we're not sure that this picture, it's, uh, it's the, the simplest one to, to describe uh, nonlinear uh, lower order corrections, but it would be interesting to study that. And then, uh, I mean, when we were finishing this work, we discovered by chance that, uh, that Ludwig and uh, Denis were working uh, on free probability in many body systems. And uh, so, so it was discovered basically independently that it was really simplifying things. So, so the question that is really important to us is that uh, how, how general is the use of free probability for many body physics? And we are all both working on uh, several different applications. So at this level, it seems that the math is the correct one because we're dealing with non-commutative objects. It's not clear what's new we're going to learn. I think that um, so far, this is a mathematical framework, but it's not clear what's the physics that uh, we are approaching. Okay, so with this, uh, I thank you for the attention up to 4 p.m. <laughs>
So the, the, the typical uh, thing that you, you do, you, you first write it as a, as a sum of, uh, so when, when i is the same, so i equal to j, here you have, so here you have your diagonal expectation value, which is independent of time, so this will be the stationary value that you obtain, and then here you have the oscillating part. And when you take the, 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 the average over time, this oscillating part, uh, since these are non-degenerate, will vanish. And so, so basically, this is, uh, is, uh, is, the, is the stationary value. So, so doing assumption on how, how these matrix elements behave, uh, it's saying something on how things approach uh, equilibrium. So what, basically, the idea is that the diagonal part, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's much bigger than uh, the, the, the off-diagonal part. The off-diagonal part matter when you compute the dynamical correlation. Yeah, the two. So at this level, yeah. So at this level, uh, th this theory is somehow a bit too general to be. This, this slide. So at this level, this is just uh, um, so I'm not saying anything about the structure of this function as a function of energy. So of this smooth function A, the microcanonical expectation value, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that it has to be a smooth function of the energy density, actually. So not only on the, the extensive energy, but of the energy density. So it could be whatever, whatever it wants to be. So that depends on the microscopic, uh, microscopic properties of uh, the Hamiltonian. So this is just, uh, let's say, a structure. So the structure and the scaling with the system size or, or with the, with the um, density of states that these matrices shall, shall have. Also, this off-diagonal function that, that encodes all the all dynamical correlators, also of this, I'm not saying anything. So then also the shape of this function in frequency will depend on if the system is diffusive, if the system, uh, uh, in this case, so if the system has conservation laws, et cetera. So all the physics is encoded in the specific structure of these correlations. And, and ETH is just saying how this uh, goes with, uh, with the different scaling of, uh, of the statistical properties of the matrix uh, that encodes them. Yeah, I mean, the, the function f, it's very hard to determine analytically. So, so this is a very, so I'm just putting, a, what, what are the building block of the theory? I'm not telling you how to compute them. So, sorry, just to go back on this. So for instance, Ludwig in his example, so Ludwig has a different problem because he doesn't compute things as, as a function of different times, but in space. Okay, so for him, for him, what for me is that he wanted to is, is position one, position two, but in his model, which is a free model, uh, so you can, you can do calculations analytically, and they are able to write explicitly what's the structure of these uh, of this, uh, free cumulants. For us, I'm just saying that they will matter for your dynamics, and then I'm not saying anything about uh, how they're done. And understanding them analytically, I mean, you can do it in some solvable models, and that's definitely interesting, but there is no general uh, 